that's James's lobster salad, I guess, and pineapple coconut cupcake and strawberries. I'm going to talk about Death in Paradise. James is going to talk about a bunch of books, but um, most of the, like, we got this food given to us from the Salvation Army, and we're very thankful for that. But um, uh, most of one container of strawberries I had to pitch, and I don't know if I'm going to leave those oranges up to you to decide whether I pitch them or wash them. Because I honestly, I don't know if those ones are any good either. Yeah, we'll see. But, um, like, uh, I always say when, when the people at the, who give out the food say, oh, this, this doesn't look, this one doesn't look good or whatever, I'm like, it'll make great compost. So I'm not worried about it. And, and um, yeah, yeah, it's better than it's just being dumped in the garbage. Exactly. So, anyway, um, and we'd never get lobster if we didn't go yeah. get it for free. That's incredible. Well, I'd feel guilty if I paid for it because I don't want to encourage them. Yeah. Anyway, I feel sorry for it. Because really, this meal that James is having here, even like if you bought it from the store, then that's a... That's a thirty-dollar meal, I'd say. You know. The, so this is pre-cooked. It see? is, yes. That's why it's red. Yep. And uh, when when she said it was pre-cooked, I was like, oh, well, that's even better because I I don't like having to cook the stuff that James eats because it's I don't eat it, so it seems so anatomical, right? Um, but anyway, most of this container is actually grapes washed early um, because grapes are on sale for very cheap this week at the Superstore. So we have lots. I'm very thankful for them. I'm thankful for all this food. Like, um, I told the people at the Salvation Army that, like, they were saying, well, I, I said, oh, the lobster, that's great, we'll enjoy that, or whatever, and they, they know I won't eat it, and so they're like, well, well, you won't enjoy it, and I, I'm like, well, you know what, um, James is going to enjoy eating it, and I'm going to enjoy the fact that, you know, he's, he's, he gets to eat it, right? I've only tried it once before. You only tried lobster once, but you like shrimp. Shrimp. I do. It's sort of the same, just small. Yes. But anyway... And if you're not enjoying it, well, then the dogs are going to enjoy it. And I'll enjoy them being able to enjoy it. So, I'm thankful for it anyway. So, anyway. Death in Paradise Season 13. I can't believe that they've put out 13 seasons of this show. Because honestly, the acting is dreadful. It's absolutely terrible. I could even hear that in yeah. the background. I was... The acting is really bad. Trying to read. They had one uh, relatively interesting story. Yes, yes, I know. And that's the thing is, uh, although I don't like the whole, okay, gather all the suspects and let's, uh, I'm going to give the whole uh, lowdown on what I, what I figured out. It could be like you. <laughs> yeah, could be you. <laughs> I don't like and that. So, well, it's not but, them because... Um, you're waiting for them to So it's silly, right? Because the police would never do that. That's absolutely ridiculous. But here, it's like a Agatha Christie-esque sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so that always happens at the but end. But Eric Gill Poirot is not a policeman. Exactly. And neither is Miss Marple. Uh, mm -hmm. Even so, less. Yes, no. even less. So anyway, um, but here they're the police and, and they do that. And it's kind of silly. But the mysteries are pretty good. Uh, there's the first, I think it was the first episode on this one. I was like, oh, that's kind of silly. You get, well, it, it may not have been the first, but it was near the beginning somewhere because it was a while ago that I watched it. So anyway, um, it was uh, about a, a Ming vase and I mean, you know something's, something's fishy. You're like, hmm, why was this woman and her husband invited to join them? And I mean, there's no other workers here. This is just the family and them, you know, so what? Um, but, and then when the, when the man gets killed and he says, 
it's behind you. You know, as he's his last breath, he's dying. It's behind you, and so they're looking behind themselves, and they're like, nothing there. What are they? What is? What was he talking about? You know, um, and it's kind of silly. I'll give the spoiler alert here for what it is. It's behind her when she's um, in the pictures in the folder. That's what's of interest, the thing that's behind her in the pictures, that the, which you don't see, but you know something's up because this is, uh, you're trying to figure out and, and you're like, oh, okay, well, what's, where is this going and why, you know, you get little clues along the way. But um, anyway, it's the main box that's behind her, right? So in the, in the like, um, Skyping pictures, videos. Anyway, but why didn't he just say, "Your Ming Vaz," and then she, "It's your Ming Ming Vaz," or whatever. And that would have would have been just as easy to say, and it would have, you know, it would have been very clear what he was talking about. Um, anyway, so that one bothered me a little bit. But besides that, the mysteries are pretty decent. You can actually figure them out along the way if you're paying attention. And, I mean, you don't really want to pay attention because that means actually watching this terrible acting. But you get some beautiful scenery. I mean, it's, it's paradise. You said this was Jamaican? Um, yeah, I guess so. It's in the Caribbean somewhere. Well. And... Uh, most of the Caribbean is not even speaking. So, uh, Idyllic Caribbean island of Saint Marie. Saint Marie. Yeah, French name. But anyway. I don't know if it's made up. There. there are a lot of little islands in the Lesser Antilles. Yeah. The bigger ones we know about, like Jamaica, mm -hmm. the, yeah, I think it's called the Greater Antilles, Jamaica, Hispaniola, which is or probably Hispaniola, mm -hmm. Haiti, and food on me. Dominican I don't know Republic how. are located. I don't even think I ate while I was wearing this shirt. I guess just making the food. Yep. Somehow it ended up on me. I think um, Puerto Rico is part of that. Cuba is mm -hmm. definitely. But the Lesser Antilles, all sorts of little islands and stuff like that, Trinidad, Tobago, so on and so forth. Yeah, but the only part of this salad that we bought, or the whole meal, the dessert and stuff too, um, was the kale, I think. Oh, and the feta cheese, because it was a part of the salad kits that I was eating, because I, I didn't want to risk eating the feta cheese, because you know me and headaches, so don't, it's not worth it. Not worth it. Even but I love feta, but Pauline is saying she's not suffering from headaches as much anymore. I haven't. I haven't so but we'll see. I mean fingers crossed, right? I'm hoping that maybe Well I'm we, heal, healing somehow. Mm -hmm. So our tentative Thank you God. Our tentative <laughs> uh, healing. Uh, explanation is Grapes. And? I'm eating loads and loads of grapes. But what else? You've been eating the oh, kale salad salads, too. Yeah. Especially kale, salads. right? Yep. So, uh, we'll just see. keep track. This might be uh, really important for people who I'm have hoping. a tendency for headaches. I mean, the grapes have been so cheap, so I've been eating loads of them. Just anytime I'm like, I feel like snacking because of course I feel like snacking look at the weight of me I and um, so I'm like okay more grapes right right because it's better than going for something like that <laughs> so grapes 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 lots of grapes so I don't know I'll leave that up to you to decide whether I wash those and try to eat them because they don't have you washed them you have no I haven't them. washed them okay you want me to wash them and then you decide to eat them Okay, I'll do it. That's fine. I think they'll be a little dry inside. Oh, okay. You know so you think they might be okay? They'll be okay. They won't be 
Okay, really, so I'll wash the it. The texture won't be tasty. That is an oxymoron. Yeah. Well, anyway, better than pitching them in the yard. We'll find out if they're edible. So, uh, you were going to talk about some books today. I think I might. Have. You just said that one. Thing. Yeah, but it's amazing it, that, like, the one contain. Yeah, that's all I had was that to talk about. The um, we got two containers of those hydroponically grown strawberries given to us for free today from the Salvation Army. I was very thankful, and one of them looked dried out, the the strawberries, mm -hmm. and the other one they looked perfect. And then when I opened it up, oh, they're all Super. rotten on the bottom, right? So the one that was dried out, well, that one's okay, even though it yeah. didn't look as good. But this, the one that's um, looked great. Well, it's. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of them, I picked them up and they were just mush. I couldn't even do anything with them. I just put them right into the colander to toss in the yard. But um, they looked so perfect. They, they will so go perfect. to use. Really. Yes, the compost. I mean, they're, they're, they'll grow more plants and whatever. You know, we'll have apples and apple trees and cherries and cherry trees and all that. So that's wonderful. And, uh, and we had perfect avocados given to us today, which when yeah, they were giving out the avocados, I'm thinking, oh, am I just going to be putting them in the yard? Because okay. we've had such bad luck with avocados for They're awesome. six months, like a long time. And uh, But these are perfect. They're absolutely perfect. So I'm very it's thankful. Great. Now, I'm not launching the lobster on camera because... Uh, I know. It's going to be a I tough don't know thing for you. Uh, uh, well, the only other time a I hammer? tried to eat them was... Honestly, I don't know I how was, you get uh, in there. I was on chemo. I'm going to have to look it up online. How do you get into a lobster? Anyway, I... Oh, I, I, I remember that. Eating. Yeah, that was not a good time. I can't say that it ate anything. No. It was just disgusting. Yeah. It was lobster. Right? I don't know. Perhaps. <laughs> it, we went to this fancy buffet where it was like a... Total paleo thing, really. It was like fat and meat of all kinds. Well, and fish. I wasn't able to eat much. I had a much worse reaction to place stuff even much. Oh, I thought that was the one you were talking about. Mm. This was a follow-up to our wedding kind of like reception. Oh. You know, I, I felt so high. The nausea didn't bother me mm. for the reception, so I was eating all sorts of stuff. <laughs> And then it was like, I don't know, a week or two weeks later, it was like, wow, let's try it. Same place, I think. And it didn't work out. Wow. Yeah. And it got even worse, like at Beaver Lodge, we went there, it had... Yeah, that was the one I was talking about. I had to go and throw up in the toilet. I just made it, you know. Yeah, well, somebody told me, oh, you know where the best uh, buffet is? It's mm -hmm. on on Sundays and this, this yeah. place. And so I found it and brought him there and I thought, this is going to be so great, right? Because he handled the buffet so well he liked the buffet and uh, and he always does he loves the the buffets but what he loves is the salad bar and this place it wasn't a salad bar it was total paleo buffet and not the kind yeah. that <laughs> so I'm actually going to give a recommend to a fairly big company I don't know if it still exists anymore Bonanza they don't have a they used at have Moose Jaw much. Well, they used to have go one to Moose in Jaw. Lethbridge. It's it's the you know it's a reason for visiting Moose Jaw, the Bonanza there. It's so good. They, they used to have one in Lethbridge. It's now a strip joint. So. Oh okay. Yeah. And. Um, well, it shows the priorities here. Well, it's a weird place for a strip joint too. It's not <laughs> yeah, they used to be kind of a scuzzy the, place now. Kept the Bonanza spread. But anyway, Ladies just yeah. lay there. Mm -hmm. At any rate, uh, it might still exist in Moose My dad used to love it back in the day. Mm -hmm. Take us down there, treat us all to salad bars. So. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, and that's what I would eat. And I kind of know, like when I'm eating kale and stuff like that, we're eating so much salad, I eat it with um, dressing. But my policy was no dressing, nothing that, you know, was... Like adding fatty extra or, fat yeah. or whatever. Yep. So I'd get pretty well everything that was in the salad bar. I'd get the occasional, or just for variety, maybe a little bit of uh, macaroni and cheese or whatever. Just a little bit on the plate. Okay. Oh, like macaroni so, salad? I guess. Well, no, it was macaroni and cheese. 
They have macaroni and cheese there? Are you sure? That's what they had. They had stuff where, you know, they had bread. Well, they, they had some things, to, like if you went at a the specific time of day, then you might get um, french fries and hot wings on your salad bar or something. I can't, or bacon. I remember at breakfast time they'd have well, bacon and, that, and okay. stuff at the side, and you could get bacon if you wanted. Well, I can't say I ever did that, but I'm not no. uh, basically a Pisco vegetarian. But um, yeah. they'd have corn there, you know, like mm -hmm. niblet corn or whatever. It wasn't cream. We're talking about cream corn. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they'd have other stuff, not just salad stuff. And then, of course, I'd get the dessert from me was the fruit that they had. Mm. Not as good as selection of fruit, but... Mm usually pretty good. Okay. So, so what do you have to talk to us? About? Not today. Hmm. Just going to mention this aphorism. So open hour, I get around to dealing with when, when I finish up. But you're not talking about August. it today. Okay. Well, I, I'm hour. basically both. At a later date. I got through it all. Oh, great. In the German, oh, over in, 200 Well, pages. that is great. Well, that's quite an achievement. Yeah. Now, say he was uh, one of the best stylists, German stylists, in uh, where uh, yeah, in a I'm language where mine. most people writing in it are the antithesis Beautiful. of style or have the antithesis of style. There we go. Haha, <laughs> I didn't break my plant. Well, that's nice. Yeah, that is That's great. a nice geranium, eh? Yes, I love it. A geranium I can identify as geranium. The ones I see out. I, every spring, I always mistake it. Now I can, I'd recognize it, but I, I just wouldn't identify them as geranium. Mm. What are they called? Wild geraniums or prairie geraniums or something? Oh, per, um, sticky purple? Is that the one you're talking about? Would sticky it? purple? Did we walk, go by on a walk? Yeah, I guess it is. Sticky purple. Anyway, they don't look like geraniums. Not the ones that you see in the domestic situation. Anyway, contract on America, the mafia murder of President John F. Kennedy, by a guy called David E. Schein. Now, he overemphasizes the mafia role in uh, this. It should, it, yeah, he goes with mafia murder because of the alliteration, I think, but the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And I'll show you a picture of this shine guy, David E. Shine. He looks as though he might be a little bit shy. Too. The German, of course, would be shy. Mm. You can tell that Scott is just shy. And uh, he's the director of management information systems at the National Institutes of Health mm -hmm. in Bethesda, Maryland. And I think Bethesda, Maryland was actually the place where they botched, intentionally botched, Autopsy of the JFK took place. Mm. Probably the na some sort of naval facility there, but that's the Maryland, just outside of Washington D.C. Excuse me, Washington D.C. And basically to the north and well, to the west. I'm gonna let these dry off here. More the west, maybe Washington D.C. The recipient, a uh, uh, doctorate in mathematics. That's impressive. What's even more impressive. It was from MIT, so that's in Cambridge, Massachusetts, part of the urban sprawl around Boston, Massachusetts. I believe it's north of the Charles River, MIT. Cambridge is pretty awesome. It also hosts Harvard University and uh, what is the Radcliffe? I think that used to be a women's university. It's still there. So under a Woodrow Wilson Fellowship, so I presume that was some sort of something like a scholarship or something. Shine is on the Board of Advisors of the Assassination Archives and Research Center in Washington, D.C. So not far away from where he's this director of Management Information Systems. Now, I'm going to show you how he did the job. He knows, you know, even though it's mathematics, he knows how to put together a note. So this is uh, well footnoted. We've got over 50 pages of notes. Footnotes. 
except there at the end of the volume. Fairly small print. Well handled. Principal source, just principal sources. Um, almost 10 pages, principal sources listed nicely for you. I own some of these books. Not too many. I'll check up A's, Mark Lane, and Rush to Judgment, and I believe that was put out in 1966. It's a classic as far as I'm concerned. There it is, Mark Lane, Lane Mark. Rush to Judgment, a critique of the Warren Commission's inquiry into the murders of President John F. Kennedy, Officer J.D. Tippett, and that one's important, and Lee Harvey Oswald. That one actually is, in terms of solving the mystery, or getting on the track of solving the mystery, that's the most important one, because it was uh, mafia, obviously, the mafia the killer, and by a longtime member of the mafia, called Jack Rubenstein, otherwise known as Jack Ruby. 1966, as I said, it's a class, it's important, it's key. Now there's another one in here, Houston Joachim, Joachim Houston. Oswald, assassin or follow that. So, Yist and Joachim, as I recall, and what year is that? 64. So, it's a little bit early. Uh, he was basically accusing LBJ of being responsible for the, or contributing to the killing or something like that. So get this straight. LBJ had nothing to do with the assassination. In other words, the plotting, the planning, all that sort of stuff. But the thing to understand is, there were two cover-ups for the assassination. One was done by the Mafia, and it might still be ongoing for all I know, although most of the killings that they did, and that's how Mafia covers up more than, aside from intimidation and threats and stuff like that, they, they don't, I, I won't say they love killing people, but they have no compunctions about killing people in order to cover up their crimes and misdeeds. And uh, I think they were got through that. Well, there, there were two big gulps. There were gulps leading up to the garrison thing. So the garrison uh, misinvestigation. So that'd be 1967. There were a rash of killings all the way from uh, 63 until 67. And then. Um, there were more killings when, I believe it was even before the Carter administration, but particularly under the Carter administration, where they kind of tried to open up the investigation. And uh, there were killings in the 70s, mid-70s, into late 70s. More killings. Lots of them. Lots and lots of them. Way too many of them. So the other uh, cover-up was engineered by... Lyndon Baines Johnson. There, there was probably a third one done by the CIA, and uh, but the one uh, engineered by Lyndon Baines Johnson. It looks as though Robert F. Kennedy's Attorney General cooperated, cooperated in covering up the murder of the assassination of his brother. Why? Because uh, he uh, agreed. It looks like with Johnson that they didn't want. The American government, the Democratic government, the Democratic Party government of the United States, they didn't want it to be forced into invading Cuba because the original plot, the original plot, was to kill Kennedy and make it look like a conspiracy of a bunch of people, communists, make it look like communists. It's actually carried out by right wingers, mafia some disaffected members of the CIA, some right-wingers, particularly from Texas and Dallas, and even more particularly, and um, Cuban exiles. And that's not necessarily right-wing. I, I don't know if the, some of the left-wing exiles got involved in the uh, plotting and actual, actual execution. I'm afraid uh, it was basically uh, Cubans that did uh, killing because it's supposed to look like a, a Cuban plot, a Cuban communist plot. And uh, the whole idea behind that initial conspiracy was to force the United States, uh, 
and Jones in particular, to go after Cuba. Hey, you know, they, they killed our president, you know, right there in Dallas. A bunch of them shot down Kennedy. It was made to look like lots of people, like what happened. Lots, lots of people were involved in killing Kennedy. How much time? Four minutes. Four minutes. Okay. Lots of people. Lots and lots of people. I don't know how many shooters. In many ways, it doesn't matter. It's more than one. I don't think Lee Harvey Oswald was a shooter. It's possible. But I don't think so. I think uh, shots were fired from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository on Elm Street in Dallas. But uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, by all accounts, was on the second floor when uh, stuff was happening. Why he wasn't watching the parade, I don't know. I think he'd been told to lay low or something like that. I, I have a very strong suspicion that he was cognizant of the of an assassination plan. They say, it's not in this book, but they say the uh, international trademark or whatever it's called, World Trademark in Dallas, where the president was going to go after his parade and I think give a speech, was crawling with security, black security on the parade. And what the conspirators, it looks as though what they've done is given out clues that, oh, they were going to kill Kennedy, but you didn't have to worry about the parade route because they're going to whack him at the trademark. It was pretty well planned. And my suspicion is the person who was the source for it was a little, probably a triple agent called Lee Harvey Oswald. I think more than anything else at that point in time, he was working for the FBI. He worked for a variety of different people. He worked for the FBI. He worked for, uh, for a while in New Orleans for a guy called Guy Bannister. And the story about Guy Bannister is he's something like a John Bircher, apparently a former FBI agent, but uh, quite right wing. So Lee Harvey Oswald looks it's almost dead certain <coughs> that he uh, was working for Bannister, but he would have been working as a double agent keeping track of Bannister for the FBI. How do we know? You know, he's handing out literature in New Orleans, that arrested that summer, 63 summer. And uh, the address is for the same office as Bannister, just a different street address, Bannister's office. Same building, different address, same office. You know, buildings often have, you know, they're on the corner, whatever. Almost through? Um, you have to wrap it up in a minute. Yeah. So there's much more to talk about than this. But it's basically mafia with a lot of other people involved. There's a heavy involvement by uh, you know, police, corrupt police in Dallas, from what I can tell. And it might have actually been, went right to the top, uh, Chief of Police Curry, forgotten his first name. He, he'd be otherwise forgettable in individual. But I think he's responsible for timing things to correspond with Ruby coming into the Dallas police station. It wasn't Ruby timing it according to the police schedule, the police schedule according to Ruby's appearance, so stay tuned.